Let me throw something at you that this will be a great statistic for you. So I worked a show recently and um, we we're selling augers, Strike Master, the 40V, the new electric auger. We sold 41 of these augers in two days and not one gas auger. I would have never believed it. Well, personally, it's already happened. I haven't used a gas auger in three years. This is year four. Uh, you know, and you know, we got to thank the battery industry. That, that's where this has really came from. Our battery technology has moved on to these lithium batteries. And, you know, DeWalt and Milwaukee are the ones that are really leading the way to come up with these brushless uh, drills. You know, and that's my choice of, is using the Milwaukee or DeWalt battery with a, a, a K bit on it or a hand auger bit. And it's quick, easy. And as I get older, light gets to be really important. You know, the, the, the K bit with the Milwaukee is like eight pounds is what the thing weighs. So I can throw that at my fish house and still tug it along. It's not a three horsepower engine with a 10 inch steel bit on it. You know, I grew up in a time when uh, I, I remember the, the big 12 gauge or eight gauge wire, you hook it up to your car battery and you carry this big heavy thing. And I, I swear there was smoke and sparks flying as you were pushing the button to get that thing through the ice. Power has become more reliable. Power has become more uh, efficient. Um, and the units that are using, um, you know, some of this reliable, reliable battery power has made ice fishing, uh, whether you're using a drill as your main power source or, you know, a, a lithium ion battery. I think that the fact that you can push a button, turn it on, have it run, it's silent, it's not smoky, you're not dealing with fuel. I think that the advantages are too great to ignore. Having said that, if you're on a long trip, you know, can't charge uh, batteries or you want the reliability of gas where you can bring as much gas as you need to drill as many holes as you need. Uh, I mean, there's, a, there's an argument for both, but I, I, batteries are definitely here to stay. Are they replace gas? Maybe down the road, but not into the, at least the short term uh, future for, for most ice anglers. I guess I've never thought about it that way because uh, you, know, you go up to Winnipeg or you go up into the Canadian Shield and you drill in March for late ice crappies or walleyes or lake trout and it's ridiculous because you're considering putting a second extension on your auger and you're like, how can any power plant at the top spin that amount of auger to chop that much ice and do it efficiently? I think the day will come. Uh, and I think that currently 90% or better of anglers could make use of the electrics on the market and never be left wanting that gas auger. But if you're the kind of angler that travels all over the ice belt and you fish a couple oddballs way up north where the ice gets really thick, you need an extension, and you're fishing end of the year, then I think you'd find yourself, at least currently, wanting a gas auger. I, I can see right now, as far as augers go, uh, gas augers, it's gonna be a struggle, uh, no matter how, how small or how light they make them, because electric augers, when I'm using my electric auger, and I'm using a, a drill, a half inch uh, M18 fuel, you know, the Milwaukee drill, I'm using it with a Nils Master bit, I'm drilling and I got one battery on a charger. If, if we're driving our trucks out, I always have it on the charger. It's never ending. How many holes can I drill with that? Infinity. And uh, I've got, I, now this year I'm going into with four batteries. If I'm on a snowmobile or a four wheeler, I can drill and drill and drill. And even in cold weather, keep the battery in your pocket or throw a little hand warmer in with it. I don't, I don't really see a future in gas augers. They have a lot of torque. You can't beat the torque with some of the stuff coming out on the power tool markets coming our way. I kind of look at the auger industry like the power tool industry. And 20 years ago, you were plugging in every tool you had. Then they started to ship into battery tools and people were slow to adopt because the product was junk and it wouldn't last and it was expensive. Now, it's not. Now we have the longevity of these batteries are lasting five years and to be honest with you, what sold me on was not having to pull start augers anymore. Not that it takes a lot of work, but to just hit a button and go is absolutely an amazing, it's an amazing deal. And I do think, I do think in the northern regions, northern Canada, Alaska, things like that, guys will still, when they're stacking extensions on top of each other to get through, I think you'll still see the need for gas. But I do see it kind of slowly fading away in the next 10 years. Well, I, I see a time in some regions where you may not use gas and propane, especially here in the United States, you know, maybe with stricter laws. Um, it's a little warmer here, but 
I also feel if you make it up to Canada a lot and fish in the coldest, most extreme conditions where batteries perform the least amount and you know, you need you need an auger, a gasoline to, to, to drill through three feet of ice. So I think in regions they will shine and then in areas like Canada, they will always be around, you know. Um, that's just how I feel. It's just uh, so you know, I, I don't think they're going to go away, but obviously, you know, around here, you know, look at how many guys are using drills to panfish now. Like everybody, pretty much, you know, a lot of people. You know, I am, all my buddies are, and it's great. Um, but when I'm fishing for trout and pike, and it's all a 10 inch auger, you know, like I'm not taking, if I could have an 11 inch auger hole, I would, or a 12 inch. I would use a 12 inch hole for the big trout. It certainly seems like we're making treks that way. I mean, I think that that's where technology has really given us some distinct advantages. And the fact that we're able to go lighter and more mobile with electric power versus gas, plus it's just that much easier to, uh, to transport, I certainly can see us making, making strides that way. But ultimately, the anglers are gonna decide what they like best because just because the industry thinks it's right. If consumers don't like it or doesn't fit their fishing style, it's not going to sell. On uh, another good fit question, I've used an ion for going on four years now, and uh, for me personally, I really don't see the need to go to a, a gas or a propane auger. I like the lightweight of electric. I, you know, there's a lot of good things about it. Uh, if I was drilling more than 50 holes a day, then you know I wouldn't want to carry all the extra batteries. But I think the technology as it stands today uh, is good for most people, and overall the, the augers work really well. Uh, whether it completely replaces gas, I think the technology, the battery technology, would have to get better uh, because you still have a lot of big guide operations. You have a lot of people who will drill you know, 100 holes a day, and they're, you know, the gas and electric, or gas and the propane augers still, you know, have a good place. Uh, and you're seeing, like, you know, the Eskimo gas augers and stuff went down to 22 pounds this year. Uh, the propane's 26, are really lightweight. And, you know, uh, Strike Master has some lightweight stuff. And you, so, you're gonna have that bot battle for a few years yet. And I don't know for sure if you know electrics will totally take over. Batteries have to get better yet. They're better now, but they have to get better yet. I, I think there's still a place, you know, I, what I like, that would be comparable to somebody saying, um, you know, are we gonna get rid of all the cars that are out there today and just go with trucks? So I like that we've got electric drills out there currently but everybody's got a different need and want, and I don't believe that uh, gas is going away anytime soon, or propane. I like my four stroke. When I uh, know I'm fishing a lot of big, you know, big holes, my eight, I want my eight inch bit. I'm gonna run that four stroke more often, if, especially if I come up north to like Minnesota or the Dakotas where it's super, you know, thick ice. Where I am at home, a good year is 18 inches. So my, my electrics, I can I cannot run them out of juice in one day, and I'm guiding. I got people cracking whip, drill more, drill more. We're not on fish. Where are they at? Where are they at? You know, and I'm drilling and drilling. So I can't I cannot juice that electric, and and I I had to go like all the way to the next day to kill it by like noon or two o'clock the next day before that thing finally died, and I, I just couldn't believe that it wouldn't die. I was like, die already! <laughs> and I finally you know finally drilled the electric out of juice. Man, that thing. I, so it's possible. I think the average person thinks they drill more holes than they do. And if they saw what we, we tournament types do on, and, and the, the guys who actually Swiss cheese a place and, and actually are popping off holes, I mean, we're, we're popping two, 300 holes a day probably. And, you know, thousands to pre-fish at a tournament in a, in a week, you know, in a few days of pre-fishing. And, you know, I think people misunder, you know, or underestimate, uh, or, 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 you know, they, they don't think that the electric is capable of keeping up with the 30 or 40 holes or 50 holes that they're going to drill, and then they, they can clearly keep up with any of that stuff. You know, that's a great question because, you know, 
depends on the style of fishing that you do. For me, um, I do a lot of running and gunning. Um, the, the new battery operated augers are fantastic for that. They're light, they're easy, especially early ice. But if we get into a late winter situation where we get a real winter on hand and I still need to run and gun, it's really hard to beat a laser mag. I mean, they're still the fastest auger on the market. You can cut a ton of holes, you can move around, you can do everything that you want to do on ice. Now, if another angler's idea of going out ice fishing is only sitting in a wheelhouse, that 40 volt lithium is the way to go. Uh, that might be the only auger that they ever own. However, for me, I like the option, the option to be able to run both. In my mind, where, where an electric auger absolutely shines is I'm using a six inch flighting and I'm dealing with 20 inches or less of ice, I can rip through a lot of holes on a battery and it's lightweight, you know, you just push a button and go. The other situation where it shines is somebody fishing out of a wheelhouse, they want to re-drill out old holes and not get the carbon monoxide or the smoke inside the house. But with that being said, you know, gas augers aren't going to go away in places for certain niches, you know. I don't think this electric auger craze is ever going to get big up on Lake Winnipeg, for example. You know, you're dealing with a flighting that's got an extension that's 20 inches long. You can hardly lift it over your head. I mean, that's where men are men. And, um, you know, you got to drill a lot of holes. If you show up with an electric auger, you're going to look like a, I mean, you're showing up to a gunfight with a knife, you know. And same thing at home. I get 30, 36 inches of ice, and I got to drill holes for myself and three other people. And I might have to drill 100, 150 holes and rip through them quicker. Gas auger is the way to go. And so gas ain't going away in places, but there's so many applications where, you know, especially that smaller flighting, less amount of ice. Eh, once you use electric auger, you'll never go back.